because this is a great question from John F. Hamilton. Thank you, John. Excellent president, John F. Hamilton, that one. That is quite, it's a regal name. It's, it's a presidential it's, it's name. Very dignified, John F. Hamilton. He asked, are you saving any pets lately? For those of you who don't know, David Diamond uh, in his off time saves pets. He, he flies pets from one place to another in this country for, to get them homes. Uh, pets that are, how do you, how do you find these, these dogs? The organization that I, I volunteer with is called Pilots and Paws. And, and there's, there's a whole network of, of people moving animals from point A to point B out of kill shelters, um, uh, you know, to, trying to find homes for, for these animals just around, really around the world. I mean, we've done the, the longest transport I ever did. The, the pup originated in uh, near Istanbul, Turkey. And I took the dog and, uh, and got him to Provo, Utah. So there's big networks for, uh, for people who are trying to save all animals and that sort of thing. It's my favorite use for my airplane. So as soon as the opportunity Well, tell them about out, where they can see your website and your, the, or the, the, your the social media page so they can see the pictures that you have of the, of the dogs that you've saved. Yeah, if, I mean they can they can follow the link from from probably from this these threads from Berlin. When I comment on there, you can follow the links and just go back in my history and see some of these pups. They're pretty. They're pretty cute. It's cute. It's, <laughs> it's good to do. And thanks to everybody who who supports these networks. And for those of you who don't fly airplanes or wish you could get involved, you can do ground based transport. So if you do searches on Facebook or the web for uh, for animal transport or rescue organizations in your area, you'll you'll find the whole underground network and you can get involved. There's always a need for people. Okay, um, this is a good question because I love reading. Stephen Gelman, thank you, Stephen, sent in a question. Wants to know what books we are reading during this quarantine. Oh wow! The one I'm reading now is. Um, Pretty great. It's it's uh, To Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. And it's the story of how his breaking the whole Harvey Weinstein story to the world started the Me Too movement and what it took for him to get all of the details, to get people to talk, the operatives that Weinstein put on him to stop him the wow i mean even he was working at nbc at the time and they wouldn't run it uh, they they commissioned it but then the president looked at it and said um i just think this is too dark and i don't really want to do this and so ronan farrow took it to the new yorker and they ran it and it's a fascinating book it's it's very interesting a lot of intrigue what about you john admit it show us the cover i know what you read porn? okay you want, to, you want me to go get it i want to see the cover i want people to see the cover okay You're right back go ahead you tell them yours Dave. just just as a warning to people this is something you'll never be able to unsee so if you have a certain idea of john crawford then you don't want to jeopardize that just look away. Well, but what about you, David, while we're waiting for John? So I, the, uh, here's a, a crazy thing about me is I only read nonfiction. And right now I've been uh, just taking the time during the, the downtime uh, to rediscover some old graphics stuff that I, talents that I used to have to get into some video editing stuff. And so I'm reading tons and tons and tons of that. The video editor that I'm using is, the manual's like 1500 pages so i'm just kind of reading a little bits of that and watching a million youtube videos and trying to you know trying to mark the downtime with something productive now let's see what john's been reading john okay this is a fantasy series called the wheel of time by a guy named robert jordan it's about a 15 series book series that's one of them oh I'm yeah I'm on book seven. This is book yeah, seven. Yeah, no, that's that. My my husband loves that stuff. 
He yeah. loves that stuff. He and loves between, the fantasy stuff. He loves romance. <laughs> and between those two, I read a book called The Killer Angels, which is about the Battle of Gettysburg and the Civil War. Oh, don't try to butch it up. We know you read vampire diary, oh, novel, I do. fantasy romance books. Those are great. That's a lot that of was people pretty like those. Stuff oh, you, oh, that's what you were trying to, were you trying to get me to bring out one of the vampire books? <laughs> David? David? Yeah, of course. What's wrong with vampire books? Oh, I, I just, yeah, they're we, sexy. We, 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 well, I didn't know this about John. And when you're all up here in I, I, uh, at my house and we we're doing some recording stuff for Transcendence, and I remember like going downstairs and John's on the couch watching this vampire or reading this vampire romance novel. And I'm like looking at him like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> and, and I find out this is his life. He loves these books. And I was like, that's the strangest thing. <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> My first sexual stirrings were watching a Dracula movie. I remember the movie Dracula has risen from the grave. And I was probably, I don't know, nine or something and, 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 and watching Dracula come in and then the girls on her bed and the, 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 the curtains are billowing and he gets down on top of her and, and bites her and she's just like, ah, and I just looked at that just like, there were some stirrings going on in me that I didn't understand and it was cool and I really <laughs> liked it and I wanted to keep watching that over and over. So yeah, I get That's it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, funny. so i have to admit though i mean because you, you you bring up paul and paul loves chick fl pl chick flicks chick and all flicks. That stuff. so um so i did I, did you ever ask paul if he watches when when calls the heart he's loves it he's oh watching it right now and this i look at him and go what the hell are you even thinking <laughs> I was watching this thing and I'm absolutely obsessed with this show. I far, love it. How far are you now? And then I find out that Crawford has already watched the entire series. <laughs> absolutely. How many series are there? How many are there? Is there a number of series? I don't know. It's like there's seasons just like on Netflix. Like and seasons? Like, yeah, there's a total of seven have been completed. I think, David, you're on four? Yeah, wow. I'm on. I, I don't want to say anything because, you know, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but. Oh, I could give you the whole spoilers away. I don't want to know. I don't want to know anything. I'm already horrified at what's going on right now because I'm not sure where this is going to lead. So every day is touch and go with me right now. So, so you're sorry. getting on him for vampire books and you're watching When Calls the Heart. All right, David, you want to do a question? Bart Repsick, maybe that's pronounced right, is asking whatever happened to the song Love Life. Remember you sing it on the 1984 tour. Uh, it's around... Maybe you'll hear it again someday. Love Life? That's a yeah. song? Yeah. Why well, don't I remember I'm, that? What's Because sing, you were chanting. <laughs> I don't remember it either for some reason. I don't remember that song. Me it was, uh, we did it on the Love Life tour when um, uh, you were out doing costume changes and we we, we did the costume, like this, the shift to the second outfit in stages. And you right. had to do torture which is when the rest of the band would be getting changed. Okay. And I did Love Life. Did you sing it or Marietta sing it? No, I sang it. Okay, sing a little, just, I wanna get it back in my head. Oh no, I'm not gonna sing it. Why do you sing well? Uh, Better than well. I'm yeah, I mean, God, you're a really good singer. When you love life fades away there's a dream that still remains In your heart you've had it for so long Since you were young Where was I, David? You were all changing your outfits. Okay, I was, Did the boys were it? too. Okay, yeah. so the boys were too. Okay. You wrote it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, cool. All right, I got a question from... Dan Turek. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Uh, why is only animal available on our website? Good question. Transcendence is available on, you know, in all the places you can buy albums, um, iTunes, uh, Amazon, because in this day and age, the only place that record labels can make money, one of the only places, 
is with album sales. So when we signed the deal with Cleopatra, and we love you all at Cleopatra, they asked for that because they want to make money too. You know, they believed in us, they signed us. And so we made that deal. So you can't buy it from our direct website, but you can buy it at anywhere that um, CDs are sold. So David, get another one. Uh, this is from Debbie Goss, Gossy, Goss, Goss. I'm not, I'm sorry, Debbie, I don't. Don't we have any Smiths? This is from Debbie Smith, who smells her last name G-O-S-S-E. She wants to know, what do you see for the future in concerts? And are we planning any online shows? Terry? What do we see as the future of concerts? Wow. That's a, that's a scary one for me because I just heard that our governor, Gavin Newsom in California, just announced that there would be no sporting events for a year. And it made me think, okay, what's that mean for concerts? Because it's a lot of people gathering together. What do you guys think? And we would love to do online. We're already talking about doing an online concert. It's a matter of logistics because here in California, we can't gather anyway. We can't get in one room and do a concert yet. So it would be, you know, remotely doing doing songs and then editing them to editing us together and and presenting it. So at that point, that that's that's kind of the idea. We're just kind of hashing out the details. But what do you think the future of concerts are, guys? I think f my opinion is that until we have an effective treatment or we have a vaccine that it's dangerous. Um, it's, I, I know a lot of people, I, not to get too political about this, but a, a lot of people feel like, well, I'm going to, I'm wearing a mask or I'm not wearing a mask, but it's up to me. And maybe they don't understand that the mask is actually not to protect you. The mask is to protect others from you. Um, because you can be a carrier and, and, and have no idea about this. And I mean, if there's one thing that I learned as a gay man uh, living through the beginning of HIV and all that in the early 80s, is that when they give you the rules, just follow the rules until you're absolutely certain that it's safe to not follow the rules anymore. Um, and I think that it's uh, with with COVID. I think it's it's the same thing. I mean, we're having economic issues that are that are undeniable and it's hitting some people harder than it's hitting other people. And I don't want to uh, diminish that. Um, but I, just getting to specifically to the live concert thing, I would personally have a hard time even doing one unless I knew that there was there was some safety for the people who would show up. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe that yeah. means, like we talked about this, maybe it means outdoor venues start up before indoor venues, limited capacity, you know, instead of people sandwiched in, they sell a third of the concert tickets or. Wouldn't that be weird? Like, like all the people are six feet apart, so they can only get like 10 in a, in a room that would hold a thousand. <laughs> No, but Terry, the amazing thing about it is that we no longer have to use as an excuse. We've got like the, it's like, well, the only reason that there's nobody here tonight is because of COVID-19. It's not because of us, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect for performers who don't really want to try that hard. It'll be a sellout at 10 people. <laughs> it'll, it, yeah, it'll be awesome. Maybe the three of us could do something where I live. I live in Ventura County in California. They have loosened the restrictions to allowing five people at a time to congregate. And if just the three of us did a, an acoustic performance, you know, that's less than five. That's true. Yeah. For sure. Do that. Or I could just go get the acoustic guitar right now and we could just play something. I think this is the question and answer portion of the show. <laughs> Derek Selensky, thank you, Derek, asked uh, why we don't do his three favorite songs, which are You Don't Know, On My Knees, and Pleasure Victim in the set. So I want to tell you, Derek, that 
Uh, Pleasure Victim, we have taken in and out of the set. And we actually were talking about putting it back in the, uh, the acoustic section. And On My Knees also, we have done a few times in this show. And we're still working on it because it's one of those songs that really plays well on the album. And it's, one, it's not so easy to get that vibe, you know, live that we got on the recording. So we're still just tweaking it and seeing what, how it can work as well live. So that's Absolutely. where we're at with that. And where are we at with You Don't Know? You could talk about the orchestra album a bit, because we talked about potentially. Talk Go about ahead, it, John. Sir. Go ahead, no, you we, talk. Well, we did a, um, there's an English gentleman who is putting out um, bands recording their older songs, some new ones with the Prague Czechoslovakian Orchestra. And he has, was a big fan of Berlin and is, is almost done with our version of it. And we listened to it the other day and all three of us felt that what the conductor and arranger of the, of the stuff for You Don't Know was actually very good. And David, I think you and Terry both were thinking of ways to incorporate some of the ideas from that orchestra arrangement into the version um, that we do sometimes live. We haven't done it for a couple of years. But the stuff that we heard that on that album was pretty inspiring on quite a few songs. ask what's next for us and that is there are two albums that'll come out next the orchestral album and the Berlin holiday album that's almost done and we're also going to keep touring for a little while the transcendence album because we haven't gotten a tour much <laughs> since it came out usually you tour you know a year or two years uh, on an album and and we have been kind of yeah, like sidelined. Thank you for the support. Thank you for being there. And hope to see you in the next the, with the next Absolutely. video when we when we do another one. We'll let you know. Wait, I just want to say one thing before we go. Don't let this thing we're going through get you down. Take this downtime and learn new stuff, discover new things about yourself, get outside take the opportunity to do all the things you did not have the time to do before and just set aside at least a few hours every day to not worry about what's going on. And, uh, and I think that when this is all over and we look back on it, we just want to be able to think about all the things that we gained out of it. And there are lots of things to be gained from this. Beautifully said. Be good. Be safe. Bye everybody. Bye. Okay, the recording stopped. God, what a fucking annoying thing. These pests and their questions. I, I didn't actually turn off the recording. So. I know, it says record on the top of my phone. Are you serious?